guys. Joe Samantha here. How do you like that base station? Another big win for your page today. Dude and Sex absolutely showed out. Go green and gold. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Onward Your Victory podcast. I'm Joe Samantha, Giant Killer. Talking right now, we're still rebounding after the tough loss on the road to Loyola of Chicago, Loyshy Ramblers on Sunday. Mason right now, five and six going into this matchup, midweek matchup with Duquesne. First time, and this is an interesting fact, due to uh, back-to-back years of COVID-related cancellation, this is actually the first time that Mason has played the Dukes since the 1920 season under Dave Paulson, where the Patriots started out really well, started out, I think it was 11-1, and then completely collapsed in conference play, went 5-13 and in conference uh yeah that was a season that that was a season that occurred my freshman year actually i'm now a senior we haven't played the dukes since then this is actually we're since we're at their place we haven't seen the dukes at eagle bank arena since i believe since i believe the season before that be the 2018-19 season i don't think we've seen the dukes at eagle bank so it's first time i played the dukes in three years uh interesting up and down time for the dukes uh there was a lot of controversy around the program last year uh, only one conference win last year had a really, really rough go. A lot of obviously, of course, since their game was canceled last year, a lot of Mason fans were not happy at the fact that game, considering how early it was in the schedule, was not made up in some capacity. There was a lot of anger over that, considering how not good Duquesne was last year. But either way, what we're looking at right now, though, is we've got a, it's an interesting game. Duquesne is a lot better this year. They're fifteen and eight right now. Uh, they're six in the A-10. They're five and five currently uh, in conference play. Uh, but here's the, you know, this, this is a team that's had some downs. Had a really, really good uh, start to the season in their non-conference play. We did really, really well. Uh, admittedly did not play a whole lot of teams. Did get a nice uh, a wins over Indiana State and DePaul at the end of the part there. And a good, nice win over Colgate uh, that kind of looked, they look okay. Uh, but not a whole lot of quality wins there. Uh, has a big quality loss at Kentucky. Uh, that counts as a big quality loss. But then started really, really well uh, beating VCU. VCU, I believe VCU is still a one of only two losses by VCU in conference so far. far. Beating VCU at their place. Had a lot of hope for them after that. But a close loss at Richmond. Uh, st- uh, started then a uh, 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 three and, uh, uh, excuse me, two and five uh Two and uh, two wins in five games stretch for them. Uh, that be- that only meant beating some of the low lights, beating St. Joe's and Lo- and Loishai, but losing to St. Bonaventure, lost to Fordham, and admittedly a loss to UMass uh, about a week and a half about I mean about a week and a half ago. That right now is not looking the greatest. Uh, admittedly, but they came back uh, this past Saturday, really killed a GW team that is admittedly starting to look burnt out. Uh, we'll have more on that next week when we play them. But right now, this team, it's again another one of these teams scoring guard. This team lives and dies by Day Day Grant, uh, the transfer guard out of Miami, Ohio, the junior transfer guard, uh, lives and dies by Grant. Uh, best player by far, averaging 32 and a half minutes a game, uh, 15 and a half points a game, 4.8 rebounds, only 2.3 assists, though. Uh, and he's only a 39% shooter, but he's 41% from behind the line. Uh, very, very deadly from three. Not so much from the mid-two range. I would think the goal for the Mason uh, is probably going to be whether or not they can stop him in that regard. Interesting thing here, though, of course, the storyline is Ticket Gaines back. And if Ticket is back, the, the knowledge is that Victor Bailey Jr. is out. What we've heard is that Victor Bailey Jr. is likely out for the remainder of at least these next couple of games. At least these next couple of games, Bruce Bailey Jr. is out. But if Ticket Gaines is back, does that give us then that defensive weapon that we've been missing in recent weeks to shut down in, in this whole conference season with him out, shutting him out a team's top option? If Gaines is back, that's been the question. That'd be a big deal. Uh, Jimmy Clark and RJ Gunn round up the top three. Uh, Jimmy Clark the third should not be uh, underestimated. He's averaging 12 and a half points a game. As a guard, but uh, only twenty nine percent from the from three, so kind of let him shoot. R.J. Gunn, forty three percent from the on the arc. Uh, he's averaging about 10, 10 points a game. Uh, the small forward has struggled with health, but he's healthy right now. Only gotten thirteen games, 
Joe Reese and Trey Williams each run out the front court, the six foot eight Reese with nine game points a game. Williams are 7.4. Uh, Tevin Brewer is also their sixth man, gets about uh, 24 and a half minutes a game, uh, 42 and a half percent free uh, three point shooter, only about 6.4 points a game now. So, really kind of a huge situation. But a guy I'm going to hear a lot more from, though, Austin Rotoff, averages about 15 minutes a game, but he is their biggest guy at 6'10, especially with Reese, only about 6'7 and a half, 6'8. Uh, going up against the 6-9 against Josh Oduro, we might see a little more of Rotroff here as they try and deal with Oduro uh, as a group here. That's going to be very, very interesting to see, of course. Uh, this is a good team, though. Uh, I hate to say it, folks. Looking at the way this is going right now, I say Mason loses. I hate to say it, but I think it's true. I say Mason loses 78-71 uh, here in this midweek matchup with the Dukes. I just don't know if recent results, I just don't see a stopping grant enough. And at their place – Gonna be, it's a hard place to play. Pittsburgh on a Wednesday, it's a hard place to play. I just don't see it happening. I'm sorry to say, folks. This has been the Onward to Victory podcast. I want to see your guys' predictions down in the comments below. What do you guys think is going to happen in tonight's game? Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the subscribes. And we'll see you guys on Thursday for the recap of the Duquesne game.